Hello and welcome back to another exciting talking point. So if you've not seen any of our episodes yet, then welcome to a new way of thinking and a new way of viewing investments. So at the Wealth Masters Club, our goal is to teach ordinary South Africans how to start investing in property through specialized trusts, but a little more on that at the end of the video. Now, if you've ever looked at the potential of starting an investment portfolio, then you'll know obviously that there are quite a number of moving parts that need to be taken into consideration before you start. And of course, the most important is to make sure that your foundation is strong. And by that, I mean, making sure you've got the right structures in place. And we obviously have the perfect solution for you. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out a little bit more about that. So in today's talking point, we're going to be delving a little bit deeper into one of the core fundamentals of the wealth mastery way of investing in property. And that is, of course, trusts. So if you've seen our video before, then you'll know that we spend quite a bit of time talking about trusts and the correct structures, and more specifically, the legal requirements of that trust. So to talk a little bit more on the point of trust and particular bank accounts of the trust, we've got our legal eagle, Marishka Fonsell, joining us today. So Marishka, thanks so much for your time. Damien, thank you. Great to be back. Fantastic. Now, we've got quite a few questions here, and some of them have come in from our readers, so I'm going to jump straight in. Um, so could you just give us a little bit of a background for those who may not know or might be new to the channel? Can you just remind us what is a trust and what is the purpose that it fills within property investment? So a trust is a separate legal entity that's set up by a founder. And all assets transferred to this entity is administered by the trustees on behalf of the beneficiaries. Now, we especially draft what we call an inter vivos discretionary trust. This is set up during the lifetime of the founder, and this trust is registered as soon as the master provides us with the letters of authority. Now, probably the most important purpose to own property in a trust is that the value of your personal estate decreases. And this will have the effect of a lesser estate duty amount that's payable. Now, in the event that property is in your personal name and ultimately administered in your deceased estate, the property will still have to be transferred to the head, which will, inc which will incur attorney fees. And when rental income is received of the death, the executor may charge 6% of the death fees. Thanks, Marishka. Sure, it's, it's quite shocking stats there that I think people don't take into account when they think about, you know, I'm investing now, but what happens on death? And we've actually had a previous video talking specifically about those death costs. So if you want to view more, have a look at our other videos and you can see a little bit more about that. So Marishka, back to the questions. Now, a trust you've mentioned has to have a bank account in your article. Can you just tell us why does it need to have that bank account? Because a trust is a separate legal entity, you do not want the trustee's personal funds to be mixed with that of a trust. This may put the assets at risk. So let's talk about that a little bit more detail now. So let's say a trust does not have a bank account. What could happen in that situation? If a trust does not have a bank account, it may be seen that the founder never had the intention of registering a valid trust in the first place. If we look at the FMB versus Brits case, rent from the properties could not be paid to a trust bank account, and this caused the trust to be declared an alter ego trust. Now, let's just talk a little bit more about the trustee. So that's obviously one of the important um, roles within the trust. If someone acts as a trustee on behalf of a trust, whether it be their own or on behalf of somebody else, and that trust is deemed invalid because of a lack of bank account, what could happen to that trustee? Well, not having a bank account does not immediately make the trust invalid, but it could definitely contribute to being deemed invalid. So depending on the circumstances, the trustees may be liable in their personal capacity and trust assets may be ruled to form part of the trustee or founder's personal estate. And that is what you wanted to avoid in the first place by registering a trust. And Marika, let's say we've got a trust and that trust now has a bank account. How much money needs to be flowing in and out of that account each month to keep it valid? 
Well, to have a valid bank account for a trust, only the bank fees need to be paid. So the bank does not close the account. But there is no set amount on transactions that needs to happen on a weekly or monthly basis. Right. And then just the last question that we got in from one of our readers, if they have a trust that is dormant, does that still need a bank account? No. So the trust has been divested of all assets and liabilities and you close the bank account and that trust is dormant. Whenever the trustees decide to use the trust in the future, they will need to reopen a bank account. Mariska, thank you so much for bringing some important information to light. And again, it just goes to show the importance of having the right team working with you and for you when you create your investment success. And speaking of success, there's only one way to find success in your lifetime, and that is to constantly learn and grow your knowledge bank. So for this reason, we've created a free online training platform where you can join our founder, Kut Kutsia, as he teaches you how to create your own financial freedom through investing in the right properties with the correct structure. And now this is very important because I think a lot of people get excited about investing in property. They jump into it without having those structures in place. And that is where everything can and probably will fall flat. So to register our free online training, please click on the link in the description below. And you can view our training in either English or Afrikaans at absolutely no cost. But that being said, I can guarantee you that the information you're going to learn in that training is absolutely priceless. So be sure to register today. Until next week, until we chat again, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.